Which of the following forms the surrounding lining of dentinal tubule? The options are lamina limitans, lamina propria, lamina lucida and lamina densa. All the four options have one term in common that is the lamina. Now let's discuss them one by one. So first let's begin with dentinal tubules. Dentinal tubules are the structures present within the dentin which consist of the odontoblastic processes which are nothing but the extensions, cytoplasmic extensions or cytoplasmic processes of the odontoblast. So odontoblast are dentin secreting cells whose cell body is present within the pulp. So it forms the outermost layer of the pulp. The outermost zone is the odontoblast zone. So only the odontoblastic processes extends into the dentin. It runs within the dentinal tubules up to the level of dentino enamel junction in case of crown and up to dentino cemental junction in case of root. And some of the odontoblastic processes extends beyond the dentino enamel junction to run within the enamel and they are known as enamel spindles. Once it crosses the DEJ, they are known by the term enamel spindles. And next we are going to focus on the lining of dentinal tubules. Now look into this picture. So here we can appreciate odontoblast, the outermost layer of the pulp and the cytoplasmic extensions of the odontoblast runs into the dentin. It runs within the dentinal tubules. First it crosses the pre-dentin which is an unmineralized layer of the dentin and then enters into the dentin calcified portion. And then it extends up to dentino enamel junction within the tubules. And next regarding the surrounding, that is the lining of dentinal tubules, comes the peritubular dentin and intertubular dentin. So peritubular dentin is the dentin which immediately surrounds the dentinal tubule. So this is the peritubular dentin layer. Whereas intertubular dentin denotes the portion of dentin which is present in between the two dentinal tubules. Okay, intertubular, which stands for between the tubules. So it runs between two tubules or it is the portion which is present between the zones of peritubular dentin. So these are the two important dentin covering the dentinal tubules. And now let's quickly discuss some of the important points regarding both the types of dentin. First is peritubular dentin. So it is the layer or it is the portion of dentin which covers the dentinal tubules. Okay, surrounding, immediately surrounding the tubules. Whereas intertubular dentin is present between the tubules therefore it forms the main body of the dentin. And now getting on with the composition, peritubular dentin is highly mineralized. It is mineralized than the intertubular dentin. So comparatively intertubular dentin is less mineralized. But the common feature is that both are mineralized in nature. And next getting on with the organic content. Peritubular dentin consists of thin and delicate organic matrix, thin and delicate organic matrix which forms a very thin inner lining in the dentinal tubules and this lining, inner organic lining is given the term lamina limitans. It is known as, as lamina limitans. So this is the term given to us in the options, okay. And when it comes to intertubular dentin, it consists of greater organic matrix, greater organic content. About one half of the intertubular dentin is composed of organic matrix, which consists of fibers such as collagen fibers, hydroxyapatite crystals, etc. These are the differences based on the composition. And next, one another important point is that the peritubular dentin is lost. Both the mineral content as well as the organic content of the peritubular dentin is lost after decalcification. Whereas with respect to intertubular dentin, both the content are retained after decalcification. So that is an important difference between the two layers of dentin. And now in this picture when we observe, we can see that the dentinal tubule diameter is greater towards the pulpal end. It is of 3 to 4 micrometer in diameter whereas as we move towards the dentino enamel junction it is very thin with diameter 1 micrometer. So therefore this decrease in the diameter of dentinal tubules is because of the surrounding layer of dentin that is the peritubular dentin because I have stated that the peritubular dentin is highly mineralized so it deposits minerals on the inner side of the dentinal tubule. 
deposits the minerals on the inner side of the dentin and the peritubular dentin is thicker towards the periphery because of which the diameter is less for the dentinal tubules. So, because of this property peritubular dentin is also known as intratubular dentin because it is deposited into the dentinal tubule therefore it is known as intratubular dentin. So, now we are aware about one term that is the lamina limitans present in the lining of dentinal tubule and now let us discuss the other terms as well. Just look into the flow chart it shows that the oral mucosal membrane consists of epithelium and the underlying connective tissue. So, epithelium are of two types non keratinized and keratinized it is very important to remember the different layers of the keratinized and non keratinized epithelium. Whereas, the underlying connective tissue is made up of lamina propria and submucosa. So, here comes the next term lamina propria. So, lamina propria denotes the connective tissue. It forms a part of connective tissue which is rich in fibers. It consists of fibroblast and also some of the different cells such as mast cells, macrophages etc. and it consists of ground substance. So, lamina propria forms the connective tissue. And uh, between the epithelium and the connective tissue is the basement membrane. So, it separates the epithelium from the connective tissue. So, ultrastructurally it is known as basal lamina which is made up of two layers namely lamina lucida and lamina densa. So, these are the two other terms lamina lucida and lamina densa. Some important points that we should be knowing regarding these two layers of basal lamina is that lamina lucida it is lucid therefore, it appears as a clear zone whereas, lamina densa remember it is dense. So, it appears as a dark zone and lamina lucida is present towards the epithelial side whereas, lamina densa is present towards the connective tissue side. So, we can remember it as densa towards dense connective tissue side of the oral mucosa and apart from that lamina lucida consists of laminin whereas, lamina densa consists of that is it is the attachment point for the anchoring fibrils of type 7 collagen anchoring fibrils of type 7 collagen. So, these are some of the important points regarding lucida and densa. So, just remember densa for dark zone and it is towards the dense connective tissue with anchoring fibrils for type 7 collagen and one important feature is that both lamina lucida and lamina densa are parts of basement membrane and type 4 collagen is predominantly found in basement membrane and both lamina lucida and lamina densa consist of type 4 collagen. So, we can understand the basal lamina structure in a better way by looking into this picture. So, here we can appreciate lamina lucida present towards the epithelial side and lamina densa which is towards the connective tissue side and in lamina densa we can find the attachment of the anchoring fibrils of type 7 collagen. Okay. So, this is the structure of basal lamina and the three important components of oral mucosa can be well appreciated in this picture that is the different layers of epithelium are present followed by basement membrane and then comes the underlying connective tissue lamina propria and submucous layer. So, lamina propria further consists of papillary layer and reticular layer papillary and reticular layer. So, which we can appreciate in this picture papillary layer is the portion of lamina propria which extends into the epithelium between the epithelial reti ridges because okay, so this is the papillary layer whereas, the remaining portion forms the reticular layer of lamina propria because okay, so these two are the layers of lamina propria. So, now getting back to the question we are now familiar about all the four terms one is lamina limitans which denotes the thin organic lining of peritubular dentin and lamina propria denotes the connective tissue it is a part of connective tissue and lamina lucida and lamina densa both are layers of basal lamina so which is the ultra structural term for basement membrane our question is regarding the surrounding lining of dentinal tubules. So, dentinal tubules are immediately surrounded by peritubular dentin and the peritubular dentin consists of a thin organic lining known as lamina limitans. And one important point is that the lamina limitans is rich in glycosaminoglycans. Therefore, the right answer here is option 1 lamina limitans.